Hey parents, shut Hey there, my fellow parents. I want today's episode to really change your life. I really do. I wanted to inspire you, encourage you, educate you. I want you to feel like you are not alone in this thing called parenting, that, that there are tools for your mind, tools for what you say to get through the hard, hard times that we all, all face. Today, we're going to talk about something really important. I love to say this. I love to say parenting is never about what it's about. And today, this is an example of what it is. Today, we're going to talk about two things that we all experience every day, every freaking day. I want, we want to talk about what it feels like to feel powerful as a parent and also what it feels like to feel powerless as a parent. We're going to tell you some stories, give you some tips and tools and some antidotes. Jordan, it's never about what it's about. And what it's a lot about is how we feel powerful and we feel powerless. Yeah, what side of the spectrum are you on? If you were had like a chart, powerful on one side, powerless on the other, are you in the middle? Are you on the right? Are you on the left? How's that gas tank looking, right? Do you need more fuel in there because you're on the low side? And it, it, there's so much. You could have that question answered just in a single day. Well, right now I feel this, right. but in 10 minutes now I feel this. So the emotions true. go up and down, you know? So true. I was just talking about that with somebody just yesterday, and they're like, is that, I'm so, they're like, I'm glad you said that, Sean, because that is true. And one day we can feel like a million bucks, and an hour later we feel like, what the heck is going on? I am so <laughs> done, right? So done. So done. I know. It's so hard, and, and I get it. And this is a, a battle that we all face. You're not in this alone. We've all been there, and we all have to figure out how to – and, you know, some of you might not like the term powerful. You're like, well, I don't want to have power over my kids. Well, it's like, okay, well, are you, you know, like sometimes I kind of tend to think like I'd like to be more influential a as a parent or, or maybe, you know, bring in some wisdom. And we're just kind of using that terminology powerful to just show that you feel great about being a parent and great yeah. about what's happening in that moment. Yeah, well said. I think it's, it's totally uh, normal and good to feel powerful. Like we have – we have been charged with these kids. They are a gift. They are a blessing. We've got to teach them, protect them, provide for them. And it is a powerful job to be a parent. It carries so much responsibility. And also what I think was so amazing about being a parent is for many of us listening, we didn't really feel powerful like as children. We felt powerless even around our own parents or our upbringing was maybe chaotic unpredictable and was like what the heck like can these adults figure this out like we felt powerless <laughs> and so now here we are we're adults and we have the power we have we have the power to to build and to break and to provide to make good decisions and it's an amazing feeling being it's an amazing feeling and it makes me think of like being a kid and having that feeling i don't know if you've seen this movie it was pretty popular when it came yeah. out it's on netflix it's called yes day have you heard of yes day yeah, dude, I, I, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. So you don't have to like it or hate it, but the kids love it. And do you know why? Yeah, because it's exactly what you were talking true. about. That's For their true. whole lives, they are powerless. And then this one day, they become powerful. They get to do whatever they can think of, you know? That's a good point. As much as I did not like it, I thought it was super cheesy and annoying. That is a really nice point. And it's a popular movie for that reason. It's a very loving family movie. And you're right. Our kids want to feel powerful. Yeah. And that's part of what we're going to be talking about today. So if you are really struggling, if you're parenting, if you're struggling with your mindset, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling really powerless, this episode is for you. Jordan, when you think of the words power or power, power or powerful Ooh. or powerless, what, tell me something that comes up for you. Power. Ooh, powerful. You know, you could think of, uh, um, like Thor or, you know, the God of thunder, lightning, something that's powerful. Right. Um, but the reality is when it comes to parenting it, and I think of like moments where I've felt powerful in my family, I get a nice warm sensation. Like everything's oh. clicking, right? It's like that the cogs in the wheel are all oiled. They're working together and everything's just flowing. It's like, you're not, and nothing's, there's no resistance. It's just yeah. like, should we do this? Yes. Do you want to do this? Sure. Yeah. And everything's just easy, right? Ooh. Tell me a specific story. And I want to tell you, Winter, a story just came from mine. I think one of the most powerful times I feel as a parent for me is on Christmas morning. 
<laughs> Dude, that is so funny. I'm the opposite. I feel powerless on Christmas morning. <laughs> Tell me your story. Tell me your story. Okay, so I just I'm sitting there in my jammies, man, my sweats, maybe a hoodie. I got a nice warm cup of coffee. There's Christmas, you know, Nat King Cole is on. Oh yeah, I love it. Beautiful Christmas tree. My kids are there. They're happy. They're healthy. We've been able to provide gifts for them. There's maybe a fire going. And it just feels like this is like a dream come true. Like, this is it. Like, I love it. We did this, Danielle. We did it together. Like, I did this. I was a part of this. Right. I created these kids and created this loving family and this, this, these, these kids. And I, they're, I, it's like, I, I feel so powerful. Like, I, this is amazing. You know? Yeah. And that, in that moment, all of that that you described is beautiful. It's one of the reasons why that's my favorite time of year. I watch Christmas music leading. I shoot. I'm, I'll probably put my tree out before Halloween's over. Like I love this oh, time yeah. of year. Okay. okay? No and I know that's that's controversial yeah. too. But we won't go there. <laughs> but in that moment of that day, yeah. That that one moment that you just painted is great. And then you fast forward thirty oh. seconds, <laughs> and it's all chaos. It's. Yeah. Give me the present. I want this. I And then you tear it open, and it's not even like those darn kids are grateful for that gift. It's like, throw it. What's next? Is that one for me? And it's just constant consumerism. And then I feel powerless, and I get so frustrated. And my wife says, man, you really are the Grinch on Christmas, even though Christmas is my favorite. Because I'm like, she says that. they need right. one gift, and that's it. Because they these unappreciative little kids are just right. consuming and consuming. And so anyway, that's just my take really on it. Funny. Because it's like frustrating story, to me. Any story that is told that's just a beautiful part when we're starting about a parent <laughs> feeling powerful, you know you or anyone can poke holes in that. You know, well, you, uh, like, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's all good and yeah, daddy until all good this daddy until And you this know daddy. this. If you are a loyal listener to this podcast, first of all, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so thank you. much. Yeah. And here's something you can guarantee. I can guarantee that when Christmas time comes up, I will be talking about how, on this podcast, how I handled the big mess at Christmas when all the wrapping paper was around. Because <laughs> yes. we did last year, too. Yeah. I feel powerless. It's like, come on, guys. Let's keep it tidy, you know? Right. Clean tidy. up. Exactly. Like, come on. But I'm being the weirdo now because I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to think. But this is, this is the real world. The real world is that parents, we feel powerless. Why? Well, we feel powerless when our kids are stonewalling us. Right. We feel powerless when we ask them to do a simple chore and they don't – we feel powerless when we ask them to come to dinner and they're not because they're on a screen. Or we feel powerless when they're yelling at us or when they're yelling at each other or we're driving our cars and they're snapping at each other. We feel powerless when we try to talk with them and they avoid us or when they disrespect us right. to our face. We feel so powerless. It feels horrible when we feel like they're just – like you know, following us around the house because they're nagging us, they're hounding us. It feel powerless that they won't take our no the first time and they're baiting us into an argument and they're saying, mm -hmm. why, why, why? It feel powerless when, you know, you work hard at helping them with their homework or something and then they just forget it. And then, you know, you get calls from the teachers or you have issues out in the neighborhood or you feel powerless that you provide them this great opportunity with sports or drama and then you, you know, they don't want to go or that you get negative feedback back from the adults. It's like, this is like heartbreaking stuff, man. This is hard. You know what? We had uh, a situation happen this last weekend. Uh, it wasn't us, but my wife had an appointment, and she went to an appointment, and the, the lady there had her kid with her, right? Okay. And while, you know, th things were going on at the appointment, the kid just was nasty to his mom, just speaking nasty, oh, talking no. back. No. And as my wife's sitting there, you know, what's your role? You're a complete stranger. You're not. Are you supposed to help out of that situation? Like, hey, you shouldn't talk to your mom like that. And then, and then that's awkward. You just keep your mouth quiet. But I know in that moment, that mom felt powerless. So like my child is speaking like this to me in public, in front oh of a gosh. you know a client, and and the mom didn't do anything about it. So it just tells me like yeah. what's happening at the home. And maybe that's happening to some people listening right now. But that. That's not only hard from the mother's perspective. That's hard from outsider's perspective to see that happening it to you is. too. We feel for you. It's not because it's the it's not normal. What's normal is that in a healthy home, there's a, a power hierarchy, and the parents have the power. The kids honor that power, and the parents 
use that power wisely. And as we all know, those things can get really wacky. I want to share two, two really positive things with you. Can I? Please. The first one is I, uh, one of the things I love doing about this podcast, there's a lot of beautiful, wonderful things that come out of it. But one of my favorite things is when people write reviews for us on like, you know, on <laughs> yeah. like a- a- iTunes, uh, or Apple podcast reviews. So we got one and we get a really a lot of really nice ones. So please, if you are listening to this and you enjoy it, please do us a favor. Leave us a leave us some words. Um, love reading your words. It's like a it's so encouraging to Jordan. And I listen to this. This person, um, Breu Seven B R E A U Seven writes in the title most relatable co- podcast there is, and then this wow. person writes the most relatable podcast you can find. Not only are we in the same age range as Sean and Jordan, but we have a large family. Twins and a lucky little guy the same age. And I came here for parenting advice, but have left improving my marriage and myself through every episode. That's beautiful. Wow, that's so awesome, man. That's so great to hear. I'm so glad that this is helpful to so many people. You know, we want to imp- – here's the word. This is the theme for the day, power. We want to empower you with the tools, tools you need. And I think – one of the themes you've hopefully picked up on this podcast is we're going to give you a lot of tools for your mind, right? How to think about family, about breaking hard days, about annoying kids and annoying behaviors and hard times. And here's what I want you to think about for a second right now. I'm going to list some words to you right now. And these are like words that I'll describe as buttons, right? These are feelings that parents feel every day. And they don't feel good. But if you break down these words, what I think you'll find is that they actually all are related to powerlessness. Let me explain. This person, I'm looking at their, uh, this is one of my, these are two of my clients right now. And I have all my clients fill out these, you know, assessments, which help them to grow and make changes. And this one parent, this is, this is their results. This parent does not like feeling defective, disappointment, ignored and unheard, invalidated, and unknown or worry. They don't like feeling those emotions, Jordan. You with me? Yeah. Okay. And can you see what I see? Can you see how these are all actually kind of related to powerlessness? I'll break it down. Disappointment. Now, we all feel disappointment because we all, you know, can't control people. We don't get what we want. But we feel disappointment because we don't have the power to force our kids to do a certain things. We don't like just lower people. your expectation, bro. Keep it down way low, and you'll you won't get disappointed anymore. <laughs> we all nobody likes feeling ignored, or unheard, or invalidated, but especially this parent, because when you speak to your kids, you want to feel heard, you mm-hmm. want to feel valid. Like your voice matters here. You don't have to repeat it. You don't have to raise your voice. And when you feel ignored and unheard, it's actually a, a form of powerlessness. Feeling unknown or worry. It's like worry of the unknown. So what is the unknown? It's powerlessness. And so in this other person, this is actually their spouse's results. This, their spouse's results, they don't like feeling disconnected, humiliated, embarrassed, taken advantage of, ignored, or invalidated. So is it just me or can you see that these are all manifestations of powerlessness? 100%. I mean, these, and a lot of people can relate to any of those adjectives that describe how people are feeling and don't want to feel. And the the reality is though Sean is like you can't eliminate all that right even if you're like the picture perfect you know family person you're still yes. there are still going to be times where you're getting down to that level what you said was so important i want to make a scene let me say something bold and really encourage you all and empower you powerlessness comes with a job yeah it is a normal part of feeling of being a parent, of feeling powerless on a regular basis. And here is, and for you, if you want to become the, like this great parent, if you want to become the parent you're dreaming of being, you've got to become good and comfortable at feeling powerless. What do you think about that? That's hard though, because none of us want to be powerless. So figuring out how to master that, hopefully we'll learn how to do that today because there are times every day that we'll feel that. And it's just like, no one likes that, man. No, and it's, sometimes it's hard to fix. Sometimes it, it, it's well, not fixed right away. 
Yeah, obviously, I'm, I'm with you, and I agree. Yeah, you well, I mean, it, it gets you in a bad mood. It, no. it gets well, you in a bad mood, okay? Why, why, why it, does it get you in a bad mood? Because if you, you know, if you, if you've got something, you know, you need your kids to do, you tell them, they say no, you know, do it yourself or whatever, and you go down into feeling powerlessness, then you're just going to start to get frustrated. And then your emotions are going to flare. And then you're going to start to get angry. And then you're going to be a bad parent to them. And then maybe you're going to be a bad husband to your spouse or wife to your, your spouse. And, and it's just, it's a chain reaction. It's a snowball effect. When you get down there, if you can't conquer those emotions, then it's just going to snowball. Maybe you go and you yell at your boss because you just got a phone call from home and you felt powerlessness. And then you, you know what I mean? It can yeah. cause big problems. But why? I'm just, let's go a little deeper. I just want to get your thoughts on this. Because we're emotional beings, man, because all of us are based off emotion. And some of us have higher emotions than others and we can't control it. Some of us numb those emotions. They're like, eh, whatever. Kids are going to be kids. Let them rock all over me. You know, I, I, they won't listen to me. So we'll just see how it turns out. Then you well, mute it. Is, this is a mysterious question. I don't have the answer to this, but what is going on in the in the family life environment? Because outside of our homes, we have very little power. Very little. Most of us, we have bosses we have to submit to. We have police officers. We have social norms we have to submit to. Right. We have very little. There's rules everywhere. So we don't have a ton of power. So we're kind of, most adults are used to being of feeling powerless and it doesn't freak us out but then why is it we go in the door of our homes and we feel powerless we freak out yeah why? right you just maybe it's so hard well why? well okay so i'm trying to relate it so you had just said that you really enjoy something you just created this family this christmas setting like i helped create that this is amazing right yeah. So I'm thinking of someone who is a worker and you're working on a project. Let's say you're an electrician and, and yeah. something is going wrong with this outlet you're working on and you can't figure out why the electricity is not working. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to feel so powerless yeah. uh, because you can't figure this out. And so I feel like it's kind of like that. We have created this family, these, mm -hmm. you know, the, these kids. We have this dynamic and that project, so to speak, this life project – is not working in that moment. And so now we're just yeah. so flustered that it's right. not working to the way we want it to work. That's good. That's good. You know what it made me think of? It made, that was a good explanation. Um, it made me think of this. I think for me, one of the – so my, my kids right now at this moment are 18, um, 14, and 7. And I feel powerless when I hear um, any of my kids um, – they go to my wife to talk about something they don't they don't like about me or something that happened. Like <laughs> okay. I bothered I bothered them or okay. dad does this. And then my wife will then tell them, Go and talk to your dad about this. Right. And, or she'll come and tell me, like, hey, you know, this they brought this up. Brought this up. And I, I feel like kind of powerless. Like like I just want them I want to control them. I want them to like come and talk to me. Like, yeah. Don't do this. Like, don't go behind my back like this. Now, it's totally normal that my for kids that to are all girls to go right. talk to their mom. Of and course. To vent and talk. Because they do the same thing for me, too. They talk about mom, right? Yeah. But it's just like there's something about that where I just feel so powerless. It doesn't feel good. Anything come up for you when you think of stories in your everyday life where you might feel really powerless? Well, I mean, for me, to feel powerful, it's basically – uh. You know, at this age, my kids, we got nine, nine twins, and then, you know, a four year old who'll be, who will be five. Um, we, basically, it's a weekend, right? We know the weeks are busy. So uh, to me, it would be like a weekend time frame when I can feel powerful. And if we wake up, get out the house, go do something successful, I feel great. All right. We're out of the house. You're off tech. We're going to do something fun. I feel like the family's vibing. We're jiving. We're doing something. We're enjoying. We're having fun. And the opposite happens if we don't get out the door and the kids are on the tech and everyone's yelling at each other and, and it's screaming. But as they get older, you know, it's going to be really hard for me when they disagree with me on some things mm -hmm. or say, Dad, it doesn't matter yes. what you think. I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, yeah. Or, yes. you know, or, I you know, like their belief system, their, their belief system changes. Yeah, That's going, going to be hard. Up. And what's great about like a healthy relationship, like what you and Danielle have is your kids will go and talk to Danielle and she'll say, Hey, I need to, talk, you need to talk to your dad. So you're a team. So she's actually helping yeah. resolve the issue by going through you. And I think that's helpful with a healthy relationship is they, my kids do the same thing. 
And it's really bad when it's like, hey, let me ask dad if I can get ice cream. Hey, dad, can I ice cream? No. Okay, I'm going to go ask mom. Hey, mom, can I get ice cream? Right, yeah. You know? Yeah. And what's great is if you're in a healthy relationship, it's like, well, what did dad say? Because I know you yeah. went over there and asked him. So right. let's. So it's not like you're pinning on each other. Yes. Here's like, here's like uh, if you're listening to this, here's something that could, I hope you find really helpful. Think about your most painful pain points or your problems right now. And think about how, how are you, how are, how is power involved? And I think what you'll find in the majority of these problems, not all of them, just the majority of them, is that power is not being used well by someone involved or by this team. If you and your child are like a team of two or a family unit, your family is not using power well or sharing power well. Does that bring up anything for you? It's kind of like a generalized statement. Do you th does that connect to anything in your personal life? Well, it does, and it makes me think that like, this power you're relating to is shared. So therefore it's like, it takes two to tango, so to speak. Yeah, right? right. So right. it's not just because of me, I can't fix this myself. It sounds like there's another party here yep. and we're on the seesaw together. I can't go on the seesaw by myself because I'll just stay on the ground. I need this other yes. party to let it balance. Yeah. Because you, what I thought of there was a sports metaphor, like in a, in a, in a healthy sports team, the coach has the power to put the players in at when into the game, when and call the plays. But if, if one of the you know athletes is not obeying or cooperating with the coach, well, they're not submitting to that power, and that that could be the coach's fault. It could be a horrible coach, right? And turn sure. his, turn his kids off or turn the players off. So here's I'm going to read a couple of words. I just did the same. I did it earlier. I want to do it again. So if if you're ever wondering, man, man, am I? How am I doing? Sean's inviting me to think about how I use power. How am I doing? Am I doing well? Well, here is what I want you to think about. Take a breath and listen to my words and ask yourself this question. How are you using power? Are you using power well? And if you have any of these words that I'm about to, you're about to hear, then here is a potential that you are really struggling in how you use power. Okay, ready? Do you ever cross complain? Do you act out? Do you avoid? Do you blame? Do you belittle? Do you criticize? Do you remind? Do you use command and control parenting or makes threats? Do you get defensive? Do you lie? Do you escalate things with your own child? Do you exaggerate? Do you fact find? Do you <laughs> fact find? Do you uh, do you isolate? Do you judge? Do you lecture your own kids? Do you minimize their feelings? Do you name call them? Do you get really, really dark with dark thoughts in your own head? Do you people please? Do you give these long, horrible, cheesy pep talks? Do you take the bait and end up arguing with the child? Do you have a lot of pride or arrogance? Do you repeat yourself? Do you use this thing called right or wrong where you're arguing with somebody and convincing them what's right? Do you get really rigid with rules? Do you lose your temper? Do you yell? Do you have a loud tone? Do you avoid? <laughs> conversations with screen time why are you laughing i'm laughing because yes we the, you can't not do any of that i mean there's so many yeses in there i mean shoot the pep talk one the whole show of full house was out cheesy pep talks at the it end of the was. episode it i mean was. that's what we learned from like that's so true well <laughs> That's funny, yeah. I have to go watch, rewatch some of those episodes. Full House. Was Full House actually a cheesy pep talk? Oh, and yes, 100%. Were they were yeah. pretending yeah. to really. But this is like, this is hopefully life changing information for some of these people that are laughing at me while I'm doing it. <laughs> if you think of it this way, most of your bad parenting moments come when you are feeling powerless and you're not managing that emotion well. That is a big thing I just said right there. That I think is gonna change some people's lives, what I just said right there. Let me say it again. Right, say it Most again. Most of your bad parenting moments come when you are feeling powerless. And in that moment, you are not managing that emotion well. What do you think about that? I think about that. But I'm also remembering what you said and how we this power comes with you know shared responsibility. So this is just one side of the coin how I'm reacting with it. But there's also another side to that too, right? The seesaw approach. The, seesaw, the team. The team. Yeah, like we, I love saying this. I think we should say what I'm about to say more often. 
We often, in our society, we demonize yellers, parents who yell. Yellers, don't yell at your kids. It's 2023, gentle parenting. But if your kids are really turning their hearts away from you and they're ignoring you, abusing screens, you know, that makes it hard for a parent to not yell, right? It's like, it takes two. It takes two. Oh, yeah. You know? Because we want that gratification. We want that power fulfill in that moment so we yell to get a response like yes sir you know i told you three times i'm gonna tell you again take the dang trash out yes sir okay and it's like okay i feel powerful in this moment because now they listen to me but i had to yell to do it all right i'm going to give everybody jordan and i are both going to give you three tips here about how to thrive in power and powerlessness of parenting but before we do i want to tell i want to hear one more story from you Uh, you tell me a story of when and, and if you're listening to this you know Think of your own story here. Jordan, tell us a story of when do you feel really powerful as a parent? Like you just feel like, wow, like I'm influential here. I can make an impact with these kids. You got a story that comes to mind? Or a- well, this is a, um, a story, and it's, it's all about how you know, my, my life got twisted and turned upside down. <laughs> and I want to take a moment just sitting right here to tell you how – I feel powerful in this family. <laughs> so, you know what? Uh, <laughs> if you didn't know what he just did, he just quoted the uh, theme song for the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That was very well done, and I got that. I that feel really so powerful in a positive, you know, just when my son or my daughter yell my name, Dad, when I walk in the door, oh. and they come and run and give me a hug, right? Oh. Or, you know... Hey, Dad, can I have a hug? Can I have a kiss? Yeah, You know what I mean? It's like in those moments, I feel so great. And like any yelling or anything that happened early in the day just completely gets erased. And it's about those moments that it's just like I'm on cloud nine. Oh, that's so sweet. That's very nice. But I like, I like you know, trying to invoke whatever wisdom I can. My kids are at the point where they're asking a lot of questions right now. Yeah. And it's cool in this in this age because – There's so much technology out there. You can get an answer by asking Siri. You can look it up on YouTube. Shoot, with chat GPT and all this AI stuff. I mean, I just love when kids ask their parents questions and they want to know things from their parents' point of view. And I think it's very special to be that parent to help pass down knowledge and whatever it is you're passing down. You just just stole my story. So uh, my daughter just moved downtown. We moved to her own apartment. And uh, it's very scary, very emotional. But she's been really active and, you know, reaching out to me and asking me questions, checking in, asking me how you're, I'm doing. And we're like, it feels so special to like launch a child. And that child now, it's like she's even more involved with us than she was before she moved out because she, you know, she needs our help. She wants us to guide us or guide her on some certain things. She wants some ideas. And I, uh, I, f- I feel so good to feel wanted. Yeah. Powerful. Like, wow. Like, I have a purpose here. Right. This person's life. And, like, it just is such a special, like, sacred feeling, man. It's like, this is what it's all about. Like, you know. And that's great at that age, too. Because, you know, you you said she's 18. She just moved out. And I remember my dad, my parents would always say, man, man, when I was 18, I couldn't wait to get out of the house. I needed to get away from my parents as fast as possible. But, like, this is the opposite. Like, she wanted to grow on her own, but yet she's still checking in and calling back. That's that's perfect, man. It's like a dream, man. It's that is a sweet. dream. So Jordan and I prepared three things on um, – let's, uh, let's go with power first, okay? Power first. How, how we're going to frame this is this. We got three and three. Um, how do you um, – if you want to feel powerful – do these three things. I guess that's the prompt. I guess I could have phrased that differently. No, that's great. We understand. Um, how also known as here's three tips on how to use your power wisely as a parent. Okay. Three tips. I guess I'll, I'll read the three and then we'll both chat about them. Is that sound beautiful? Good? Okay. So, Sounds great. All right. Tip number one is something that Jordan wrote before this show. I asked him, Jordan, if somebody were to ask you somebody younger, you know, some like a young dad or a dad or a parent to be say, Hey, what, you know, how can I use my power with this kid? What would you say? And Jordan, your answer was to invoke wisdom. Yeah, and I kind of alluded a little bit to that just now. But, like, this is pretty cool, something that we get to do, right? It, it's We want our kids to become wonderful adults. And so 
now that we are all, you know, becoming, you know, more mature as, as human beings and we're learning so much more, we've got more wisdom and life experience. And ultimately, we want to share that with them. Now, does that mean keep them from them experiencing their own, you know, life experiences? No, because they're going to go through it as well. But it's just teaching them about, you know, what you know. And I think as they look at that and they accept that and you know that they've like maybe come to believe that that kind of is very cool that's just like man what i just said to them they like they're taken to heart and i, I love that feeling oh, our, our kids need our wisdom we have something they don't have and that's wisdom and they're not going to get wisdom from a screen or from these people that are making hollywood shows they need it from us they need us and so yes use your power by sharing your wisdom with your kids and build that connection so you can teach that wisdom. And that is such a, a way not only to change that child, change your family, but it will actually change the world, wouldn't it? I, I think so. I know so. Tip number two, how to use your power wisely. Form a nurturing environment in your home. Ooh, yeah, because the reality is I don't have the stats with me, but how many homes are full of just toxic vibes, yelling and screaming and throwing pots and pans and curse words and just something that feels negative, right? But we want the opposite. We want that full house home, right? We Uncle do. Jesse hanging out with us with the beautiful hair. Aunt oh, Becky, yeah. she's like, man, she's so cool and hip. And then you got crazy Uncle Joey who's always telling jokes and just all looking out for so us. We good. want that. Jordan, we want that. We don't use the word – I don't use the word nurturing very much. When I Me talk. neither. Only yeah. when I'm talking about like animals. <laughs> <laughs> nurturing, you know what? My, the most memorable conversation I've ever had with nurture about the word nurturing, you were there, and it was with Coach Rick Steen on one of our earliest episodes. Oh yeah! And this is a very seasoned, famous um, youth baseball coach. He's also coached Olympic baseball teams, and this man, this alpha male man with a beautiful Tom Selleck mustache, and he's been coaching alpha, you know, baseball players his entire career. He talks about how uh, in coaching and in parenting, we need nurturing. Isn't that interesting? Amen to that. And we don't. You're right. But if you think about it from a sports perspective, that's exactly what happens. These coaches are nurturing these student athletes as they get nurturing. older, you know, nurturing them to blossom, to, to peak at their top performance. Blossom. Takes time. There's another show from the uh, 2000s, right? Blossom. That <laughs> blossom. Was, I don't remember. So, you know, I was a big fan of I was My favorite show, if I had to break it down, it was definitely Family Matters, man, with Steve Urkel. Oh, that was and, the best. Uh, the dad, the dad. Uh, who is the dad? I mean, it's such an amazing. TBS guy. at that time was like thriving with some amazing shows. Oh, TGIF. So, think about the word nurturing, because here's here's a way of thinking about it. Is we've talked about this before. Our children are going to become who they are based on their nature and their nurture. We cannot control their nature. It is what they are. My right. daughter is 14. She recently got into cars so we went to our first car show she's wearing <laughs> shirts that have cars on them and she knows way more about cars than ever because she spent the last month researching cars and she's like very very smart about cars i don't know where she got that she didn't get them from me but what we can use is we can use our power to have so much influence over their nurturing nature nurture do we want to have a house filled with healthy foods we can do that we want to have a house filled with unhealthy foods. We can do that. We want to have right. a house full of screen, screen addiction, vacations, um, shared problem solving, chores, uh, alcohol abuse. We can do this. We're You're very right. powerful. So get it done. Right. If you want to raise your kids in a very alcoholic environment, well, you have the power. Do it. You want to raise right. your kids in a, in a screen abusing environment, in a nasty sibling environment? Do it. You can get this done. You are so powerful as a parent. That is that so is good. That nurture. And you know, there's so many times we talk about like, do you have a list for the new year resolution? What's on your goal list? And I mean, how often is that list consist of like parenting tips for yourself 
very rarely on my list. I just did a vision board. I didn't have anything about parenting on there. My, my wife's like, did you add this? I'm like, shoot, no. Mine was all about finances. I should have probably added some family <laughs> stuff, right? I mean, like, let's be real. We, so much we're just reactive parenting, and we need to be proactive, and this is a big one. We want to have a house that's like this. Let's make a plan and, and a goal to not have a house full of screens, to not have a house full of negativity, yeah. right? That's, yeah, that's wise, man. I think it's really important because especially with social media, like the social media algorithms are so important, like so – powerful so if you're really into sports you're going to get a lot of sports in your mind if you're really into fitness you're going to get a lot of fitness if you're going to get a lot of comedy but then we have to always slow down and be mindful be spiritual be true and we have to ask ourselves what is my healthy version of success here right what is what is success to me because you can make all the money in the world, but if your kids hate you, you're a poor man. Exactly. You can have the greatest body in the world, but if you're not close with your kids or your friends, yeah. you are in poverty. And you are not anybody to be looked up to, right? Right. Right. All right. So we got the two. Is there a third one? Right. Well, there is. Now, this one's super key. We should do – I'm going to do a whole episode on this. I'm going to make a note of it. Write right it down. Um, one way to thrive with power is by sharing power with your – own children oh this takes us back full circle to the seesaw analogy where it's like we're not using the power wisely so we have the power let's give them a yes day so they can have the power sharing the power i'm not saying you have to do that i'm just no, kind of bringing it back so much i know you do <laughs> So Kids annoying. love it though. Can we have a do. yes day? It's just so cheesy. I'm I like, know it is. I know. Just, the acting is so bad, but you're right. You know, <laughs> it's not about a so, yes day, but I like where you're going with so this. So sharing this power way, like with them. You do a good job because your kid's at nine. In age nine, they have a lot more power than they did when they were four, right? Yeah. Like power over their say. You're sharing screens. You're sharing screen time. You're letting them pick their hobbies. And even your son, Kinlan, who's got special needs. How old is he now? Is he four? He's four, yeah. So he probably has a lot more power than he did even when he was three. Oh, totally. Right? And you know what? You know what's funny, too? As I give the kids more power, it's funny. Sometimes they don't know what to do with it. So, like, for instance, it's the weekend. Saturday morning. Okay, hey guys, what do you want to do today? It's up to you. Well, I, uh, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's go to the park. Go, to, come on, come up with something yeah. fun, man. Anything you want. Let's stay. if you can have any. Anything. Let's do it. I, cool. I, I, I don't yeah. know. You know. So you think of it this way: if you're really struggling with your nine-year-old, it, it might be because you're really struggling and sharing power with this nine-year-old. If you're struggling with your eighth grader and your eighth grader is feeling a lot of control by you, nagging, micromanage. It probably means look deeper. It's like you, you guys are – this team is struggling with power. You're struggling with giving it up because you're scared right. or you feel like you need to be in control or you feel like you have to do these things or your or your you know middle scorer is struggling with accepting in the responsibility and the power of being a middle schooler, right? Here's a sad story. I heard a story yesterday about there's this uh, – one of my clients – her ex-husband is a, sounds like a very unhealthy person, and um, her son doesn't want to go spend a weekend with his dad. Oh, that's so why. hard. Yeah. That's so hard because he doesn't so, respect him because yeah, he, he feels scared. He doesn't like his dad. He doesn't feel safe. He doesn't feel comfortable. doesn't enjoy his dad. And so he wants to feel powerful to not be forced to go see his own dad. Now, let's have compassion for the dad. I don't know this man. Sure. He's not – the narrative about him is very bad. But he, he probably loves his kids probably, and he wants to feel powerful. Can I get my weekend? Can I get my yeah. time with my kids? Yeah. And, and now the mom feels powerless because she feels scared. Is yeah. my kid going to go over there? Is he going to get traumatized? Is he going to is, is he gonna say bad things about me to my son, which is what the narrative is? But here's why the son doesn't want to go over there because – one of the last times that the son was hanging out with his dad, the dad was bullying the son about his hair and teasing him about how long and black and curly it was. And says, don't you come back here unless you, with that same haircut. You better shave it. And so here he is. This is the style now. 2023, long curly hair is shaggy. This is what the kids like, right? It's cool yeah. to have long Yeah, old is new hair. again. Sure. Right. And so he doesn't, 
and so can you just imagine like here he is like I don't why would I want to go hang out with somebody who makes fun of me sharing who's making fun of me he's not sharing power he doesn't totally. let me as a middle school boy have my hair right I want to because my dad is so in control he wants to control my hair because he doesn't like looking at it I mean that is like how parenting and power sneaks up and toxifies everything and just ruins everything if you cannot share power with your freaking kids that's a great story because i didn't think it was going in that direction and that's the littlest thing that's not even like a huge thing when it comes to sharing power and like that little thing right there makes it to where this kid doesn't want to hang out with his dad man that's and that is not hard to change you can change that i can change it we could all change that that's not hard i mean if you if you if you have a hard time sharing power with your a 12 year old son or a 17-year-old daughter, or sharing power with an 8-year-old, you probably shouldn't have had kids in the first place. Like, what do you think they were? Like bonsai get... trees? Like RC cars? <laughs> Are they robots? Right. Like, what the hell were you thinking? They're freaking human beings. Yeah. We've gotten to a point where, like, my kid wants to not take shoes anywhere. Like, dude, get your shoes on. We... <laughs> no, I don't need shoes. Okay, bro. Kid? Okay, kid? This is my son. Okay, bro. Oh but you are going to live with the consequence if we break down in the car and have to walk four miles, yeah. okay, you were going to live. So we, we didn't have shoes yesterday. We had to go to, to my, my daughter's thing. He's like, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm like, well, you're not going out there in your socks. Oh I don't God. want holes in your socks, bro. Oh He's like, God. well, uh, <laughs> I was like, you got to, you can do whatever you want, but you are going to live with your consequences, man. <laughs> <laughs> kids, you never know. Dude, you the kids you never know days. what kids are going to say next. That's, we were like, yeah. So, all right, now let's go to, uh, Something I think a lot of people really need to hear. Let's wrap okay. up our show. Let's give them three tips on how to thrive in the powerlessness of parenting. Because as you wisely said, then I echoed after you, it comes with a job, man. Feeling powerless probably every day. Every day. Every day. Every we day. feel it in our jobs. We feel it at the grocery store. We feel it at the gas station. You feel it on the road when someone cuts you off. Like, let's just figure this out. We, we feel it at home. So we got to live with that. Yeah, and if you, I'm just saying in an edgy way, just to try to make you laugh, like if you suck at parenting, it, it's here's some good news for you. It just probably means you just suck at sharing power. You <laughs> suck at feeling powerless. Yeah. Like you're, you're, you're a power freak, and you don't like feeling powerless, and you suck at it, and you act out, and you say dumb stuff, and you do dumb stuff when you feel powerless. Well, good news. You can fix this. Right? Great. You got this. I, I can help you listen to more podcasts or join my VIP membership. You got this. I can show you what to do. Thank All you right. for so coaching us our... and making us feel good. You're right. I do got this. All right. Yeah. yeah. Let's, here's some three tips for you. All right. How to thrive in the powerlessness of parenting. Tip number one is manage that emotion well. Manage it well. Yeah. You can just do realize. It. Sean just told you, you suck. I suck. I suck at sharing my power. Okay. <laughs> I've realized that. Now I got to figure out how to manage this thing. Well, think about it. If, the, if someone sucks at sharing power in their own home, they have hope. Here's why. Because when they go out in the real world, they feel powerless, and they do okay out there. Right? Yeah. You go to your job, and you feel powerless. You don't freak out. You don't whine. You don't act out. You don't <laughs> drink on the job, hopefully. Right? You right. manage the hardships of life. And so this is an aha moment that a lot of my clients have. They're like, Sean, like, now that you're helping me understand like myself – I do these things out at my job. I act like right. a good adult out there. So I just have to re use those same skills that I've learned from my job and bring them into the home. Yes. Yes. Dude, that's, right? I bet that was such a huge aha moment. I mean, a lot of us are having that right now, like this awareness that we didn't, we didn't know we had. You asked this in the beginning of the podcast, like why do we think the home is any different than out in the real world where we have powerlessness all the time? I don't know why that is, but we want to control it in the house for whatever reason. So let's figure out that emotion. It's definitely a, the answer is a definitely a sacred answer. Something sacred is happening between us and these children. Whether they came out of our bodies, we adopted them out of someone else's body, or we put them in someone's body. It's a <laughs> sacred experience. <laughs> it's so funny. That is so funny. Yeah, those are all beautiful things, though. Too. They are. You're putting some. Putting a baby in yep. someone's body is uh, one of my favorite things to do in the world. <laughs> I kind of want to go do it right now. Not oh, you. my goodness. Not with you, but one special that person. That is hilarious. <laughs> that is so funny. All right. So, um, <laughs> so tip number two now after that. <laughs> so tip number two is something that you wrote. So how do we thrive in the powerlessness of parenting? One is we manage that emotion well. 
And two is that we speak about that emotion well. You wrote that. So That's right. Because what I was thinking of, I was thinking if we feel powerless, mm -hmm. something's going on. And a lot of times we try and hide it. But the reality is we should share some of those emotions maybe with our kids so they can understand where we're coming from and maybe why we're acting like this, why we're lashing out, why we're so upset. You know, and the more we can share with them, the more they understand. I'm sorry I yelled, but I asked you 1,500 times, and I don't really want to do this, but I just – I've did this. You know, and, and you just – you share Brilliant. what's going on inside you, you know. Um, you know, I, 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 today was a hard day for me. I, I, it's a, it's a day where I had a family pass away and it's bringing up haunting memories and you came at me and barked at me and I barked back at you and I'm, I'm so sorry, but I was having a rough day to begin with. I, most people wouldn't have known that, but you shared that with me. So now I have more of an understanding brilliant. and I can be there for you. That's brilliant. Speak on this a little bit more because for some people listening, this is the first time they've ever thought about this, Jordan sharing their feelings with their kids, sharing that their powerlessness, their struggle with feeling powerless, how hard it is with their own children. Tell us more about that. And it's, it's interesting because from a, a society perspective, people, you know, they always say, you know, stay strong, you know, you, you know, be strong in the home. And, and I think that comes with like, okay, so that means we need to not show tears in front of our loved one or our kids not cry we need to be strong here something terrible just happened we have to be strong we have to yes. we have to not let it affect us when the reality is it's eating us away inside and we're putting on this mask and that's kind of on a deeper level but at the same thing's happening on the minor level too right so and whatever that is we need to i feel like we need to share it more so that it it gives everybody a clear understanding of what's going on because if someone's just a jerk to you off the side of the road and you don't know why they're being a jerk you just get these ideas in your head and you you get upset this boy doesn't want to spend time with his dad you know and, and maybe his dad was making fun of him because he had a, a childhood things happen and it brings up haunting memories for him and and so now he's doing it to his kid but ultimately it's tearing that relationship apart yeah. but if there was something there share it and then you guys can revolve resolve it and move on so I hope I said enough. hope that, that made sense. so good. And if you need more help learning how to really connect with your kids' hearts or communicate to your kids, well, then we've got other episodes on that. Or join me in my membership. I would love to be your parent coach and to help you with that. So, yes. Maybe. Watch Full House. Just <laughs> watch Full House. <laughs> it's so, I really want to go watch it right now. Oh, my gosh. Me too. Oh, I by the way, right. I got to say this. For anybody who's got streaming channels, I just stumbled upon on Paramount+. Plus. They've got all 90 shows. They've got your family man matters. Oh. They've got Nickelodeon. They've got Salute Your Shorts, Are You Afraid of the Dark, Legends <laughs> of the Hidden Temple. They got all these shows, Rugrats, and I'm like, this is old school kid oh, stuff. This is that's awesome. Cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, just speak it well. And speaking your feelings well is healthy. All those are things that I mentioned earlier. The yelling, the snapping, the people pleasing, the arguing, that's not healthy. So speak it well. And now the, the, the last tip we'll share with you is very, very important. It's very important and it's very hard to do. What do we do when we feel powerless? Well, Jordan, you wrote this and it's so good. We want you to believe in your power. Believe in your power. Can you explain that to us? Believe in your power. So a lot of us maybe feel like we don't have power right? Maybe we tell our kids something and they don't listen to us. Maybe our spouse isn't listening to us or throws us off. But the reality is we all have power and you need to believe in yourself. You need a little Rocky Balboa theme music going on here and believe in yourself because the reality is if the dynamic in the family, yes. if you're not getting respect from your kids or if everything in the household is falling apart, it's because you probably don't believe in yourself to begin with. And so how is everybody else going to believe in you? So you have to, if you're going to say something, you know, walk the walk and yes. talk the talk, right? You need yes. to make sure that whatever's going on, that you're following through. You're not a pushover. You're not letting your kids walk all over you. Yes. You're not, you know what I mean? You need to just step up to the plate. Let's go. You are a powerful lion. And those children in your house, those are your lion cubs. And so you are so powerful. So if you are struggling with using your power, it, 
it is probably because of what Jordan just talked about, is because you don't believe you're a lion. Why is the lion scared of the rabbit? Well, because the lion forgot that it's a lion. You are so powerful. So as parents, our kids need us to use our power wisely, to never abuse it, to not abuse our power, to share our power, to not show off with our power, or to f use, f to manipulate with power, to force power in harmful ways, but we've got to use our power wisely, and that starts with our own self-talk, by seeing ourselves as lions, realizing that our kids need us to be strong lions, and that's what our kids need, and that's really what our society needs. Our world needs strong parenting, Jordan. Yes, 100%. Strong 100%. parents who speak wisdom, who show up and are the adults in the relationship. And I'm right. grateful for you, and I'm grateful for every single parent in the world who is a strong, loving, wise parent who is powerful, and they are sharing their power with their kids and teaching them about how to use their power wisely. I am grateful for these parents because they are changing the world. I love that. That's so good. And you know what? I'm going to go back to the very beginning when you read a couple of comments about the show. And I'm grateful for the parents that we have helped and the fact that you guys actually let us know. Because sometimes I think me and Sean are just talking to each other and having a yeah. good time. Yeah. And the reality is like I kind of forget like, oh, there, it was actually helping some people. So thank you guys for letting us know. Uh, I'm grateful for you and I appreciate you. Please, we are so thankful, so thankful for all you listening, and thank you for all you that leave us reviews. Thank you for letting us be powerful voices in your life. We love you.